a small uranium pellet the size of a coin can generate enough energy to power an entire neighborhood for a year. But how is electricity generated at a nuclear power plant? In this video, we'll discover how a nuclear power plant works to generate electric energy. This marvel of engineering produces massive amounts of energy that power our cities, factories, and homes. But it wasn't until 1938 that scientists Lise Meitner and Otto Hahn achieved a decisive breakthrough, the discovery of nuclear fission. This is a process by which the nucleus of a uranium atom splits into two smaller parts, releasing a huge amount of energy. This finding revealed that the atom's nucleus held a force capable of transforming the world. To generate energy, nuclear power plants use small fuel pellets made of uranium-235, an extremely powerful material. A single pellet the size of a coin can generate the same amount of energy as 88 tons of coal. It's a clear example of the incredible power stored in the atom's core. These pellets are carefully placed inside long metal tubes about 50 centimeters in length, made from a special zirconium alloy. This is no ordinary metal. It's designed to withstand extreme temperatures, handle intense pressures, and resist corrosion, even in the harshest environments. Once sealed, the rods are grouped into perfectly organized bundles called fuel assemblies. These assemblies are placed like building blocks inside the reactor, forming its core, the true heart of the nuclear power plant. Each of these rods can generate up to 1 million kilowatt hours of electricity. That's a gigantic amount of energy, enough to power thousands of homes for weeks. Bruce Power is one of the largest nuclear power plants in the world. Located on the shores of Lake Huron in Canada, this massive facility stretches over 9 square kilometers, an area equivalent to more than 1,000 football fields. Inside, eight powerful can-do-type nuclear reactors operate. This Canadian design is highly efficient and known for its reliability. Each of these reactors can generate over 750 megawatts of electricity, enough to power millions of people. In total, the plant produces about 6,400 megawatts, which accounts for nearly 30% of all the electricity consumed in Ontario. The uranium-fueled nuclear fuel is carefully shielded behind two meters of reinforced concrete, a solid barrier built to withstand any eventuality. And just in case, an intimidating do not enter sign makes it clear that this is not a place for the curious. At this stage, the fuel emits radiation levels so low that they are barely detectable, allowing workers to handle it safely. To come alive, the uranium-loaded fuel rods must be inserted with millimetric precision into the reactor's core, an imposing metal structure filled with perfectly aligned holes. For safety, anyone approaching this core must wear a bulky protective suit designed to block radiation. And even so, the reactor must be completely shut down, because if the core were active, no suit would be enough. In just seconds, the radiation intensity would become so lethal that workers would be exposed to an invisible heat capable of frying them completely. Once the core has been inspected, cleaned, and rebuilt with surgical precision, the most anticipated moment arrives, loading it with nuclear fuel, a kind of magical uranium, one of the most energetic elements found on Earth. Each of the 480 reactor tubes can hold up to 12 fuel rods, totaling 5,760 perfectly aligned rods. Once all in place, fitted like pieces of a giant, silent mechanism, the real show begins. Inside the fuel rods, an astonishing phenomenon occurs. Some uranium atoms are highly unstable, like they're always on the verge of a microscopic explosion. When hit by a particle, they enter an excited state. And that's when they begin to release neutrons at high speed, shooting them like tiny subatomic bullets in every direction. These tiny, fast, invisible neutrons easily pass through the tough zirconium walls that encase the fuel rods. They travel from tube to tube like energy messengers until they finally strike another uranium atom. And that's when something extraordinary happens. Nuclear fission. The atom splits into two smaller fragments, releasing a tremendous amount of energy as heat, along with more neutrons that trigger new splits. These new neutrons are launched again, striking more atoms that also split and continue releasing energy. This unleashes a chain nuclear reaction, 
a cascade of atomic splits that produces a colossal amount of energy capable of powering entire cities. But when we talk about a chain reaction, the most important thing isn't just starting it, it's knowing how to control it. Because if the reaction goes out of control and isn't stopped in time, one of the most feared scenarios in the history of nuclear energy can occur, a reactor core meltdown. This happens when the heat generated by atomic fission exceeds safety limits and begins melting the reactor's internal components. The result would be devastating, a potential radioactive leak capable of contaminating the environment, severely harming human health, and forcing the evacuation of entire areas for decades. But to prevent that, nuclear power plants are equipped with a system as simple as it is ingenious. Control rods. These rods, made from special materials like boron or cadmium, can absorb the neutrons that feed the chain reaction. When inserted into the core, they slow or even stop the atomic reaction, regulating the heat level with amazing precision. Without them, the reactor would be like a train with no brakes. The reactor's core is built like a true fortress. Not only is it sealed between walls of reinforced concrete, more than two meters thick, but it also shuts down automatically if the temperature rises or the pressure drops too quickly. So no, it doesn't have enough power to blow off the plant's roof, but it certainly has more than enough to generate an immense amount of heat. The heat generated in the reactor's core is used to heat water in a closed loop. This water is not intended for drinking or industrial use. Its only function is to carry heat from the core to the turbines. This entire process is monitored in real time from the control room, a space full of screens, buttons, and sensors where a team of highly trained technicians supervises every parameter, temperature, pressure, flow, and stability. The water is kept under very high pressure to prevent it from boiling inside the core. The pressure is so intense that it keeps the water from boiling even at temperatures near 300 degrees Celsius. It then transfers its heat to another circuit, where the water is turned into steam. Meanwhile, beneath the reactor core, a visual phenomenon occurs, both beautiful and unsettling. The fuel emits a blue glow, known as Cherenkov radiation. It happens when charged particles move faster than light in that medium. Once the water in the second circuit has turned into high-pressure steam, the most spectacular part of the system kicks in, the turbines. These massive structures are located in a 400-meter-long, 20-story-high room. The dense, fast steam hits the turbine blades with force, spinning them at an incredible speed of 1,800 revolutions per minute. As they spin, these turbines convert thermal energy into mechanical energy, and finally into electricity. That rotating motion powers a giant electric generator, which transforms the motion into over 750 megawatts of electricity enough to meet the needs of half a million people. Once the steam has done its job powering the massive turbines, it's not wasted. It's cooled in a condenser, a system that uses cold water from rivers, lakes, or the iconic cooling towers. There, the steam condenses and turns back into liquid water, ready to restart the cycle and repeat the process again and again. But all this creates one big problem, radioactive nuclear waste. After operating inside the core for about a year, uranium fuel rods become spent, but not completely. Although they can no longer sustain the reaction, they're still extremely hot and dangerously radioactive. Their temperature is so high and their radiation so intense that they can't be handled or stored directly. That's why these spent rods are submerged in massive cooling pools filled with crystal clear water. This water not only absorbs residual heat but also acts as a shield against radiation. There, they must remain fully submerged for at least 10 years until their temperature and radiation drop to safe levels. At the bottom of these storage pools, which can be more than 8 meters deep, rest more than 500,000 unit fuel rods. If you want to know how uranium is extracted and enriched, the link is in the description and in the first comment. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning. Best regards.